Well, hey kids, it's Sunday again, and that means it's time to open up our Bibles and learn more about God. So we want to make sure that we have everything. Make sure you got a piece of paper. You can pause right now to copy down my four squares right here, or really rectangles, and Solomon's name. That's who we've been learning about. We're going to be learning more about him today. But ultimately, everything in the Bible is helping us learn about God and what he wants from us. So let's pray right now that we would learn exactly what that is, what God wants us to learn. Take your hands, fold them, close your eyes, put your thoughts on God. God, we thank you so much for this great time when we get to look inside your word. God, every Sunday we get to do that. And then there are fun weeks like Kim Compass where we just get to do it every day. And God, I hope that all of our Compass kids are thinking about God every day or reading a little bit of your Bible every day. Because God, that is the ulti- that is the, the most important thing that we're ever going to learn about, we're ever going to know. So we thank you for your Bible. I pray that we'd use it wisely and well today, and that we'd learn exactly what you want us to learn. We pray all this in your name, and everybody said, Amen. All right, you guys. So we have been looking at Solomon. Now Solomon was, what? Was he a farmer? Was he a lawyer was he what was he he was the king that's right and first the first thing when he became king god asked him you could have whatever you want what do you want and king solomon asked for a great wonderful thing he asked for wisdom oh it was so good and god was so happy with him he was like you asked for such a good thing I'm going to not only give you wisdom, I'm also going to give you riches, and I'm going to give you fame, and everyone's going to like you. It was amazing. That's so good. And then last week, we saw that Solomon, well, God really kept his promise and had Solomon build the temple where people could come and learn about God and worship God. They used to have to do that in one spot. Now we get to do it everywhere, which is awesome. But They had that one spot where everyone would go to to learn about and worship God. So Solomon did that, and God again was very happy. He filled the temple, remember, with that cloud? Oh, that would have probably been a little bit scary, but God is just so powerful. Sometimes he's scary to us, and he should be, really, because he's so powerful. But we've been learning some great and amazing things. Unfortunately, today is not one of those fun days. Today, we're finding out that Solomon does something wrong. Ugh, it's so sad. But before we look at that, we're going to look at what God's law says. Because, as we know, we always start out with what God has told us. And so, what we can put in our first box right here is God gives his law. Whoops. God gives his law. And law is a fancy word for rules. God gives his rules for how he wants us to live. And today we have those rules in the Bible, in a book with a bunch of words on it. There we go. Remember, uh, originally God had given them rules. He gave them the special Ten Commandments on those big stone tablets. And then he gave them all the other rules and they wrote all those down and they had them. They had them in scrolls, which is pretty cool. So if you want to draw a scroll in here, you can do that too. But we, I like to think of God's word as the Bible because that's what it is. That's what we have now. We have books. So God gives his law. And the laws that we're going to look at are in Deuteronomy chapter 17, 17. And also, uh, we're going to be looking in the book of 1 Kings chapter 11. And we're going to look at the rule that he gives in verse 2. But first is this. God says in Deuteronomy chapter 17, 17, he's talking about when Israel has kings. He already knew they were going to have kings because guess what? God knows everything. So he said, when you have kings, he says, the king shall not acquire many wives for himself, lest his heart turn away, nor shall he acquire for himself excessive silver and gold. 
God says, hey, if you get a bunch of wives, how many wives are you supposed to have? One. He says, if you get a lot of wives, your heart is going to be turned away from me and it's not going to be good. That's the first rule that God gives to, the, one of the first rules that God gives to the kings of Israel. The next one is in our actual chapter, 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 2. And God says, uh, the Bible says, The Lord had said to the people of Israel, You shall not enter into marriage with them, which is the foreign nations, other people, neither shall they with you, for surely they will turn away your heart after their gods. So the first rule was you're not supposed to get a lot of wives because they're going to turn away your heart. The second rule is you shouldn't um, marry people from other countries who don't worship me. That was the point. It's not because they're from other countries. It's because they don't worship me and they're going to turn away your heart. Those are two big rules. God always starts by giving us his law. But you guys, like I said, today is not a fun lesson. It's not fun because the very next thing Solomon does is Solomon disobeys. Oh no. Solomon disobeys. And he doesn't just disobey one of those rules. He disobeys both of those rules. First, he start he marries Pharaoh's daughter. Now, was Pharaoh an Israelite? Was Pharaoh's daughter an Israelite? No, they were in Egypt. They're totally different people. They worship other gods that we learned in Exodus. And if you were with us in Camp Compass, they're not real gods. But they're totally from a different nation and they worship idols. Oh, so King Solomon, he didn't obey the first rule. He married foreign wives, and then he starts marrying even more wives. More and more and more and more. So many, I can't even draw them all on here, and it would take me forever to draw them all because the Bible says that Solomon had Sorry, I'm just trying to draw everyone's hair on here. There we go. All right. Solomon, the Bible says in verse 2, or I'm sorry, in verse 3, it says that he had 700 wives. 700. 700 wives. And he had 300 concubines. What? That's just crazy. Can you imagine that 700? That is way too, 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 too many. I mean, two is too many, but 700 is way too much. That's just ridiculous. Solomon wasn't just disobeying a little bit. He was totally disobeying. So he married foreign wives and he started to get as many wives as he could. Ugh. This is so sad, you guys. But, unfortunately, it doesn't stop there. Because what did God say? Both of those rules, it had a second part. Both of those rules said, if you do this, if you marry foreign wives, or if you multiply wives, what are they going to do to your heart? They're going to turn your heart away from me. And if we, if anyone turns their heart away from God, are they obeying God? No, it's such a bummer. So we have on here, Solomon disobeys more. Even more Solomon disobeys. Oh, it's so sad. And he starts disobeying. His wives start turning away his heart and they start worshiping idols. They start worshiping idols. They'll worship statues. They would worship rocks. They would worship trees. All of these things he's starting to worship and give sacrifices to. In verses 4 through 8 of 1 Kings chapter 11, 
it says all the things that he worshipped. He worshipped a bunch of different gods that weren't even real. They're just statues and trees and rocks and stuff. And this is what verses 4 and 8 say. For when Solomon was old, his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not wholly true to the Lord his God, as was the heart of, his, of David his father. And so he did for all his foreign wives, he made offerings and sacrifices to their gods. Oh, you guys, this is so not good. Oh, Solomon is totally not obeying here. And he didn't just stop with a little disobedience. He went more and more. This is such a bummer. Now, if we keep disobeying and we keep doing all this stuff, what's eventually going to happen? Is God just sitting up in heaven like, oh, well, I guess he's sinning. Is that what God does? No, God can't do that with sin. If there's sin, God has to punish it. So God is going to punish. Ooh, Yankees. There we go. God is going to punish Solomon. Ooh, almost ran out of room. Solomon. Now, he does it in a slightly silly way. Not the punishment, but the way that he tells him about the punishment. What does this look like? Kind of looks like a t-shirt. Like <gasps> this t-shirt. And it's a happy t-shirt because it's got a smiley face on it. Um, the first thing that God does is he actually sends, I should have put this on here first. He sends two guys and you can maybe see their faces. I'm going to put them a little bit bigger here because that's pretty small. I don't know if you're going to be able to see their faces that small. He gets two guys and this is how they feel about Solomon. <gasps> uh oh, they do not like Solomon. These guys' names are Haydad and Rezin. Haydad and Rezin. And they start fighting against Solomon. And that's part of the punishment that God says. He's like, I'm with, I was going to give you peace. I was going to make it super easy. But now you're going to have enemies. People are going to be against you because you're not obeying me. That's part of the punishment. So that's the first part of the punishment. He's got two guys that are starting to fight against him. The second part is even worse. He has another guy named um, Jeroboam. And Jeroboam, I'm going to put his color. I'm going to give him a different color here. Jeroboam starts to want to fight against Solomon a little bit because he's not, he doesn't like Solomon that much. And one day while Jeroboam is walking around, he meets a guy named, oh man, I forgot his name. Ahaz? Ahijah. Ahijah the prophet. And Ahijah the prophet says, hey, Jeroboam, God told me something that I need to tell you. And he takes his fancy new cloak that he had his fancy new outfit that the Bible said was brand new. And this is what he does to that outfit. Mm. He tears it up into 12 pieces. He takes that brand new outfit, tears it up into 12 pieces, and he says, here, this Jeroboam, these 10 pieces are for you. I'm going to give these 10 pieces to you, God says. There were 12 tribes. God says, I'm going to give you 10 of the tribes and you are gonna be the king over them instead of Solomon's son. And Solomon's son, 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 son. They are not gonna to get to be the king of all of the, all of the tribes anymore. They are only going to get, if I had 12 and I take away 10, how many do I have left? Two, just two tribes. 
That's all that Solomon's son is going to get to be king over. And Solomon's son's son and son, 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 son. They only get two. You are going to get the rest of the ten because Solomon has not obeyed me. But even in all of this judgment, even how God punishes uh, Solomon, he's still being faithful to what he promised David. Because remember, what did he say, say to David? He said, David, you are always going to have a king in your family. And one day your son, 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 is going to be king of everything. But you will always have someone on the throne. So he said, you are still going to get to keep two of the tribes. You're still going to have kings in your family. But only because I am keeping my promise to David. It's not because of Solomon. Solomon did very, very bad job. I'm only doing this because David, because I promised it to David. That is what he does. So if you're copying along, you can take this shirt and we're going to draw 11 lines on it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. If we draw 11 lines, that means we have 12 pieces. Remember, he split it up into 12 pieces. And down here, God promised because David, I put a letter D for David, because he was so faithful to me and I promised him that I was going to keep two parts for you. I'm going to fill in two of these spots. Green. Those are going to stay with David's line and all of David's family are still going to be in charge of those two tribes. But all the other tribes, everyone else, is going to follow Jeroboam. Now God also tells Jeroboam, hey, you need to make sure you learn from Solomon. Because Solomon is not obeying me and I'm taking most of the nation away from him. So if you do not obey me, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the nation away from you and I'm going to give it to someone else. Just like, remember, Saul, the very first king, God said, I'm going to give you the nation and you need to obey me. Saul didn't obey him. So God said, okay, I'm going to take it from you and I'm going to give it to David. And he gave it to David. He says, Jeroboam, you better learn because I'm in charge and I decide who is the king. So he does all of those things. And you guys, it's easy to look at this and be like, oh man, Solomon really messed up. Oh, which he did, it's true. But it's easy to look at this and be like, we would never do that. We would do so much better than Solomon. But you know what, you guys? There's not only Solomon on here, but there's also us. We've got another section down here. And we're going to talk, oh, Yankees. We're going to talk about how we do the same thing. And we can see that in the Bible. We're going to be looking at the New Testament. And just like how Solomon was first given God's laws, guess what? The Bible says that every single person has God's law written on their hearts. So God still gives his law. God, give, oh, I keep wanting to spell gives wrong. Gives his law. And we can see that in Romans chapter 1, verses 19 through 21. That's where we can see that. And this is what those verses say. It's talking about people who just totally disobey God. And this is what the Bible says. For what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world in the things that have been made. So they are without excuse. For although they knew God, they knew what he wanted them to do. They knew his rules. Uh, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him, but they became futile in their thinking and their foolish hearts were darkened. 
You guys, the Bible says that everyone understands God's law. Everyone has a conscience. You know if you go out and you do something wrong and you feel bad about it, you feel shameful or guilty or embarrassed, that's because you did something wrong and God's law is on our hearts and it says you did it, you did the wrong thing, that wasn't good. Everyone has that. The next thing that Solomon did was he disobeyed. And guess what? Every single person, even today, still disobeys. We disobey. We don't obey God. And we can see some of the results of that from James. Oops. Chapter 1, verses 14 through 15. And I kind of went into the next square over here, and that's okay, because we're going to see why in a minute. That was a scary J. There we go. Mr. Nate does not like scary letters. There we go. All right. James, chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. And this is what that says. But each person is tempted and lured, uh, is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. You guys, just like Solomon, he wanted more wives. He wanted more people to love him. He wanted more people to say how great he was. He wanted uh, just to have all the good stuff that comes with wives. He wanted all of that for himself. And he got 700 wives and 300 concubines. You guys... We have those same tendencies. We have, maybe it's not getting a bunch of wives, but it's other things. It's selfish things. It's when we want to be prideful, all of that. It's still that sin that makes us disobey because we have those desires and we we follow them. Then what happened? Solomon disobeyed more. And guess what? When we sin, we do the same thing. We disobey more. Just like Solomon. And I wrote this all the way over here because verse 15, we haven't read it yet. This is what verse 15 says. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And, when, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. That sin just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. And the Bible talks about it growing and growing and growing. And it gets more and more and we disobey more and we sin more. Ugh, that's the same thing that we do. It wasn't just Solomon. It's everyone. And the very last part, guess what? God punished Solomon. Do you think God has changed? Do you think God now says, oh, I guess sin's not that bad. Oh, well. Nope, that's not what God says. God still punishes sin. God punishes sin. And if we're the ones who sin, then we're going to get punished. And everyone has sinned. The Bible says that everyone sins. Now, in Romans 2, chapters 6, or I'm sorry, Romans chapter 2, verses 6 through 8. Romans 2, 6 through 8. This is what the Bible says. The Bible says that God will render to each one according to his works. To those who by patience in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. If people are obeying God and they want to obey him and they want to do the right thing and they stop sinning and start obeying him, what's that fancy word we use for that? Repent. We stop sinning and we start obeying. If we do that, then he will give people eternal life. They won't have to have that punishment because Jesus took that punishment and he already paid for it. That sin has already been paid for and punished. So we won't get that. But, verse 8 says, 
For those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, there will be wrath and fury. Yikes. And that's kind of what we saw a little bit here. When God punishes Solomon, it's scary. It's bad. He has two guys that really don't like him and they're fighting against him and making problems all over the place and raiding the nation. Then he's got Jeroboam who's going to take most of the nation away from him. These are big consequences. But ultimately, the biggest consequence is having to fully pay for your sins. And God's going to punish everyone for their sins unless we repent and we trust that Jesus paid for those things. That is why we're so excited. That's why we celebrate on Sundays because even though Jesus died, he came back to life on Sunday. That's why we celebrate and come together every Sunday and sing and praise God. And that's why your parents come to learn about him. That is why, because now we don't have to get that terrible bad punishment. It's so amazing, you guys. God's so good. So I hope that this all made sense. If you need to pause the video to copy down some notes or something, go for it. But that's about it for today. So remember, if you're in the parking lot, make sure we stay quiet, make sure we're respectful. Our parents are trying to learn about God too, and we want them to learn about God as well. So let's take our hands, fold them, close your eyes, put your thoughts on God. God, we thank you so much for this great day where we get to come together to learn about you and get to see some of our church friends and um, God, we just can't wait till we can do this in a normal way when we're back in a building and uh, just getting to praise you. But for now, we're so grateful that we still get to come together in a, in a different way. So we thank you so much for this. I pray that we have a great rest of our week, that we would learn from Solomon. God, we would not want to make those same mistakes as, mistakes as Solomon. God, we would want to be like David, his father, who repented, who stopped sinning and started obeying God. That is what we want. So we thank you so much for this example. Pray all this in your name. And everybody said, amen. All right, you guys have a great rest of your week. Bye.